today when I was on the train, I was thinking back to this kid I knew back in the fifth grade. Uh, his name was Luciano. We called him Lucy. He was my best friend at the time. And the reason I was thinking about him was because in our class was this kid named Caesar. Uh, it turns out Caesar actually had cancer. And I didn't know Caesar too well, but everybody knew him just as a kid in class who had cancer. And at the time I was still young, so I didn't really understand what cancer was and what it could do to somebody. And I remember he would leave school for maybe two or three months because of chemotherapy and then he'd come back. And when he came back, our teacher, she'd be very, very nice to him. And she was very kind. And since I didn't understand really what cancer was, I didn't get why she was going out of her way to be so kind. And most of the kids in class were kind of the same way. They really didn't understand what was going on in his life. Uh, but one kid did. Uh, this kid was Luciano. And I remember thinking it was strange that he would go out of his way just to be friendly to them and to talk to this kid because he, it didn't seem like they'd be able to relate to each other. So I didn't really understand why he was acting so good and so friendly to him. But over time, I kind of started to understand because I started to learn what kind of what cancer was. And I started to understand, well, the reason he's coming back with no hair and a Yankees hat on is because of the chemotherapy. Uh, but my friend understood all this and he talked to him all the time. And it kind of started having an effect on me because, you know, my friend's talking to this kid. He's being nice to him. I guess I should do the same. So I started talking to this kid, being friendly. And it was all just because I saw somebody else do it. The reason this is interesting, the reason I thought about, about this today is because my friend Lucy, he was actually a really kind of tough kid. He, I mean, he fought a lot. He, he was an amateur boxer. So you really wouldn't expect something like this out of him. Um, but it kind of teaches you a lesson because even the toughest kid in the class had the most sympathy for this kid and he was actually going out of his way to be a good person. So no matter how tough you are, just you're never too tough to be a nice guy, I guess. So I, I respected him for it. And it changed my, my outlook on it. Taught me how to be a nicer guy. I guess that's why I thought about it today. That was in about the fifth grade. And I ended up transferring schools in the seventh grade. And it was supposed to be a better school, but honestly, it was probably a lot worse because there were a lot more fights happening there. Um, and I really was not a tough kid. So I really never learned how to fight, never got into a fight. Um, but when I moved there, Basically, the, the fights just ramped up. And I remember just always being scared because every guy around you was, you know, acting tough. And I had to learn how to not, I wasn't tough, but you had to learn how to not be soft, I guess. But I, when I think back to that, all the kids I met there were very different from this kid I grew up with, Lucy, um, because he knew how to fight. He was a boxer, like he trained, but he didn't have to prove it necessarily. I mean, yeah, he was tough, but even though he knew what he could do, he wasn't out to prove it to anybody. He just spent his time just being an all right guy to people. Because I went to that school, I always had this kind of doubt in the back of my head. I never learned how to fight. And all these years later, I'm still in that mindset of like, I, I never learned how to fight. I'm not, I'm not the type of person who can. So I've been thinking just about picking up boxing just, just to try it out, just to learn how to do it and just to kind of prove to myself that, well, it doesn't really take much to be a tough guy. You just have to learn, put the time in, put the commitment in, and maybe you can start winning your first fights. So I've been thinking about getting a membership here in Boston. Uh, there's a few gyms. There's one in Southie that supposedly is good. There's another one in Dorchester, but that one's kind of far. But I want to try it out. There's also this, uh, there's this book by Jack Dempsey. I was looking for it the other day. It's called something like a uh, explosive punching. Basically, Jack Dempsey, he's this really famous boxer. He's uh, he's one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. And there's stories about him being able to break people's eye sockets because he just knew how to punch so hard. 
Uh, but this is like way back in the day before there were all the conventional rules in boxing that we have today. I mean, he really changed the sport. And he wrote this book about how he did it. I mean, basically just lays the groundwork. This is what your footwork should look like. This is how you punch. And for someone like me who's never been in a fight before, it's kind of an interesting book because you kind of learn the mechanics of it all. It's not just, you know, it's not just swinging and like whether or not you have a the attitude for it. It's, it's just fundamentals. Uh, I figure it's a lot like maybe doing physics. It seems hard at first, but if you just keep at it and just learn how to do it, you learn the technique, you learn... If you learn what to do, eventually you'll, you'll be able to do it. I mean, there's physics behind boxing. And that's true regardless of who you are, what your personality is. If you know how to punch, then you know how to punch. So I want to pick up boxing just to kind of prove to myself that I can do it because I never thought that I could. Because I still think back to when I was in middle school when I knew all these guys who were always fighting. And I was never one of them, and I never wanted to be one of them. But I also, I wanted to know that if it came down to it, I could do it too. A lot of times my girlfriend will come visit me. And if we're ever out late at night and, you know, there's somebody on the street walking towards you and you get a little worried, like, okay, well, what if something happens? Will I be able to kind of look out for my girlfriend? You want to know that you can kind of handle a situation. Just out of necessity. So I've been thinking about picking up boxing for a lot of reasons. One of them is just to prove to that seventh grade version of myself that, yeah, you can do it too, even if you're about 10 years too late. The other one is just to, to know that I have an extra tool if something comes down to it. But I like boxing, though. Uh, my favorite boxer is Mike Tyson. I, I talk about him a lot. Uh, and I hear his voice pretty much every day. As soon as I wake up, I play I play one of his interviews, but even if I don't play his interview, I still have his voice in the back of my head. There's just, there's all these lines that he says, but they're not just lines like, back when he was in his 20s, he just lived boxing. And it's not even that I'm like a boxing super fan, it's just that I think Mike Tyson, when he was like in his early 20s, was just like the greatest of the greatest in any sport, like... It takes a lot to become the greatest of all time. Like he just lived boxing. He would wake up crazy early at four in the morning just to run. I mean, he just, he thought about boxing more than anybody else. Like he loved to fight. Like it's, it's the only thing that made him happy. He was just obsessed. And I admire that obsession in anything. It doesn't have to be boxing. It could be, it could be physics, it could be math, it could be art. Like there's a few people out there who are just truly obsessed with something. And if they're not doing it, they're just not happy. And Mike Tyson was that guy. That's why I respect him so much, especially back when he was in his 20s. He was just, his life existed to do one thing and one thing only, and it was boxing. He, like, he truly enjoyed just hurting people. Because at the time, he had a, he had a mentor named Custom Auto. Uh, and well, Mike Tyson grew up well, pretty much on the streets, and Custom Auto was his boxing trainer who kind of saw a little bit of potential in him, and he took him in, and then he adopted him. But since he never really had a father figure, he wanted to make this guy Custom Auto proud. And the only way to make him proud was to become a great boxer. So he, he wanted to hurt people. So I respect Mike Tyson a lot. And I really want his mentality because I want to be able to work that hard. I want to be that obsessed with something. I guess that's why I think about boxing a lot. Because in boxing, you're not working on a team. It's just you against the guy in front of you. And it's just so, there's so much mentality that goes into it. And you're just proving to yourself that you can be great. So that's why I want to learn how to box, because I just want to prove to myself that I can be a little greater than what I once thought I could be. I, I literally just want to prove to my, the younger version of myself that no matter how much doubt you have, like, you can do this too. Like, you don't need to be special, you don't need talent in order to do something difficult. And fighting always just seemed difficult to me. I was always scared. I was always scared of getting punched in the face. And now I kind of want to get punched in the face just to <laughs> just to show myself like, yeah, you can take a punch too. So that's why I like boxing. All that stuff that Mike Tyson did really stuck, at least in my head. Because he, there's this clip of him just 
in the middle of the dark. It's pitch black. And he's wearing this just sweater and sweatpants and he's just running. And it doesn't even look like he wants to run, but he is. And just imagining how cold it must have been in the morning and he's still doing it. Like he has, he says something like, uh, he's getting interviewed by some guy and he says, everybody's a fighter in their own right. You're a fighter, I'm a fighter. But not everybody wants to wake up in the morning and run. And that's true. The only thing that separates a good fighter from a great fighter is really just a decision. Well, do you want to train? Do you want to work hard? Do you want to learn the techniques? How much time do you want to put into it? And if the answer is yes, I want to train, yes, I want to work hard, then I guess you're a fighter. I've never done it, but I'm convinced that anybody could do it, just like anybody could do physics if they tried. It just takes time. You have to sit down and, you know, the times when you kind of get beat up, you have to just keep going. The times when you're discouraged, you just have to keep going. That's how you become a little greater. So I think back to when he would run in the morning and I want to do that stuff too. I hate running. But I do run. I used to, two years ago, I used to, I used to run in winter. Uh, there's a cemetery a few blocks down from, from where I'm at. And I used to run there and it'd be freezing cold and I just wanted it to stop. I hated doing it. But I would do it just because I wanted to prove to myself that no matter how difficult this was, I could do it. You don't really need athletic ability. You just need to make a decision. Just move your legs and don't stop. And the air is so cold. I mean, it hurts. It hurts your skin. Hurts your hurts the back of your throat. But, I mean, if you just keep doing it, then I think you're becoming a little greater. So I want to get back to just running in the cold, especially at the cemetery. Because there's something different about running through the cemetery. Because you're looking through all the, basically all the tombstones. And you're looking at guys who at one point were just as young as you, were just as capable as you. And they had a life too. And every time I run through, I can't help but just think like, which one of these guys at the end of their life looked back and said, yeah, I, I spent my time well, I did it all right. And which one of them were like, well, I wish I... I wish I ran more. I wish I pushed myself a little more. I wish I just tried to become a little better. Every time I ran to the cemetery, it was the same thought going through my head. Which one of these guys am I going to end up with when I'm at the end of my life and I'm looking back? I mean, am I going to be good or am I going to be great? I want to be great. I do. I think anybody could do it. So why not me?